I'm Lee Buckner, your economics instructor, and in this video I'm going to show you a few of the concepts that are illustrated with your production possibilities frontier graph. Uh, the graph I've got presented for you here has a society that can make two different types of products. Agricultural products, here on your x-axis, and factory products, represented here on your y-axis. First thing is the PPF itself represents the society's potential for producing different combinations of goods and services. Note, potential does not mean actual production. What potential means is that given the resources society has, it's how much of good X and good Y it could produce if it were to use all of those resources. For example, let's pick point A on this PPF. If a society were to choose to make this much factory production, X amount, and it used all of its remaining resources available to make agricultural productions, it could make Y amount of agricultural goods. Every different point on the PPF represents the different combinations of products society could produce if it were to use all of its goods and services. For example, if instead of doing combination A, it chose to do combination B, that would show a huge gain in agricultural production. For a lot of reasons, society might want to do this. It might want to go from Y agricultural production, let's call this over to Z, and a big jump in agricultural production. But that's going to come at a cost to society. If it wants to make all those additional agricultural products, there's going to be less resources available for factory products. That, in turn, is going to be shown by this reduction, we'll call this the delta, reduction in how much factory produ production it's going to make. It's going to have a big reduction here. First thing with our PPF, or the second thing with our PPF we want to show is this idea of trade-offs that society can make. If a society starts off at combination A, where it makes this much factory stuff and this much agricultural stuff, if it wants to increase its agricultural production, it can, but it's going to come in at an adherent cost. It's going to lose a bunch of its factory production in order to get this agricultural production. In your book, you have a discussion about trade-offs. Trade-offs means giving up something in order to get something else. Here we have society giving up some factory production in order to get some more agricultural production. Next thing that you can see with your production possibly frontier is the idea of unemployment. Remember, every point on this chart represents how much stuff society can make if it uses all of its resources. But what if it's not using all of its resources? What if, like the United States, there are millions of people who are unemployed and they want to work but they're not. If you're not actually using all of your resources, your actual production combination is going to be something inside of the PPF, not on it. We'll call this point D. Point D represents the combinations of goods and services society might be able to make if it's not using all of its resources. That is, if it has unemployment. That doesn't just have to be labor. That could be unused capital. That could be unused entrepreneurial skills. That could be a lack of use of any kind of resources. Last big concept you want to get with your production possibility frontier is what happens if society has an increase in resources. If you have more resources, your potential to make things is going to grow. That increase in potential to make things is called economic growth. For our PPF, that's represented as your PPF shifting outward to the right, meaning uh, you have economic growth. That would look something like this. If your PPF ever shifts outward, that means you have economic growth. And again, the thing that can cause that economic growth is an increase in resources, which leads to an increase in society's potential to make stuff.